What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is focusing on helping people become the best Madden player they can possibly become. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you right now to click the subscribe button down below and uh, hit that notification bell icon because we upload videos every day that can help you improve both on offense and on defense in this game. Now in this video, we're going to be sharing with you one of my favorite little, and I think honestly, a very underrated passing concept out of the gun bunch. Um, this is really good for flooding the short side of the field and kind of attacking. If their opponent is setting, if your opponent is setting up a lot of defense to the to the bunch side, this is a really good play that you can go to that's going to basically put a lot of stress on the opposite side of the field. So um, you can do this honestly out of any play from gun bunch as long as you have a uh, hot route master. That's really the, the, the number one thing that you need to run this play. You really don't really need um, any other route. The route that I like um, I actually like to do this out of the play spacing switch. You could also do this out of um, the play corner strike or 518 hook. Those are also uh, very good plays. Even this curls attack. There's a lot of stuff out of the New England book that you can do this out of. If you've not gotten or not picked up my New England Patriots offensive guide, I believe the New England Patriots playbook in next year's game, I believe this Pat Sale play right here is going to be one of the top five plays in next year's game. And I believe that the New England Patriots playbook, with everything that you can do from it, is going to be the best offense to run in Madden 20, um, in Madden 22. So anyway, spacing switch is what we're going to be going over uh, in this video. And this is primarily designed to really put a lot of stress on their user. Okay, I really like this. It's really good specifically for when your opponent is running a lot of Mabel coverage. And so the setup is honestly really simple. All we're going to do um, is we're going to streak our square receiver. We're going to put the R1 receiver on a crossing route. We're going to put the circle receiver on a post route. And we want to make sure, like, if you're, if you're running this from, like, um, Carolina or Seattle, you could put him on a um, – you could put that player on a um, – or just use the play mesh post. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank there. You could use the me play mesh post – and use the post route from there. But I love this play and how it all works together uh, within this offense. And all we're gonna do is then put the running back on a little option route. You can also put him on a ghost route. Or if you want to, you could create a really strong flood to the right and put him on a swing route to the right side of the field. But I personally like the option route the best um, just because you know most of it's gonna do good against man and zone. So uh, anyway, cover three Mabel, and let's just go over this. So the first thing that you're going to be able to hit against the cover three Mabel is this post route coming over the middle of the field. And I love that post route because of what it does. Um, it, it just finds such a soft spot in the zone, especially if they're running cover three Mabel, because chances are they're going to want to use her the crossing route. Most people, when they see a crosser at this point in the season, are really taking it upon themselves uh, to use her that route. And so this allows us to really have... Um, a route that can get open if they do and that's why you wanted to get it all the way out and almost get it like as a delayed because you want them to cross at different points just like that right there now another way that we could run this um, if you want to have a little bit more success against the heavy pressure whether it be a man or a zone blitz is to simply put our tight end on an out route and if you put your tight end on an out route you're going to see that this is going to do a little bit better um, as far as just getting the zones out of the way. You could also put him on just a simple flat route. But see how he pulls those outside flat zones out of the way, and then now we're able to attack the right side. Now, let's spend a few minutes talking about this, um, this backside concept uh, with this crossing route. So the crossing route, honestly, is a, it's an okay read. It's not the best read. And the main reason why is because of how... Um, just how your opponent's going to play this. So um, if you put the running back on a ghost route, the crossing route gets open a lot more consistently. So let me just show you this. See here, if I put him on the ghost route, see how much more wide open this crosser gets? So if you want to, if you have the ability to put him on a ghost route, it's probably honestly best to do that. The other reason why I like to put the running back on a ghost route is let's say they send some pressure out of man coverage um, and you need to get the ball out quick. If you snap throw this, you can do this like it works. It basically functions like a table route. So if you see that linebacker blitz off the bunch side, um, if that linebacker ever blitzes off this side, you can just snap throw this out there, do a little air truck, and then get upfield. So, you know, that's why the ghost route is honestly probably the better route um, of the two uh, for, this, for this concept. However, um, the other reason why I really like this play, and another way that you could run this play, 
is to take advantage of this tight end route. So how we would do that is we would set everything else up the same. The only difference is now we put the running back on a swing route to the right. And I just want to show you what this looks like. What you're going to see is this tight end route is really going to sit down in the zone. And if they don't have a yellow zone on the field, you're going to be able to hit him. If they do have a yellow zone, it's going to continue to open up passing lanes for your um, for your your slot receiver. Now I want to show you what happens if at the snap of the ball they use her to the left side and there's no yellow zone in the right side of the field. I uh, just want to show you that really quickly so you're going to see this is what we've created as far as our concept. And now if you watch this tight end route, you're going to see it's just going to sit right there for a nice little low ball for about seven to eight yards. So if you're, if you're facing uh, a defense that is not putting yellow zones on the bump side, that's an easy way to take advantage of it. You also obviously have your, uh, your post route. Now this post route really quickly, I uh, want to talk about it for just a, just a little bit longer. Um, and this is a route that, again, their user. So if their user sits on the post, then where you're going to want to try to target is your crosser. So you see this is the concept. He goes to the post. Okay. I step up and look at how wide open that crosser is when you combine that with a ghost route. Really open uh, and a really, really good and really consistent read for you. Now, another thing that you can do from this play, if you want to get yourself a little bit of an extra pass protection, is you can put your running back on a check and release route. So you see here, I'm just putting him on a check and release route, and I'm just going to ID that linebacker. If the linebacker blitzes, the running back will stay in. And if the linebacker doesn't blitz, then the linebacker, the running back will go out. The other reason I like, the other thing I like to do when I do this is I like to double team that defensive end there because if the linebacker does come off the edge, the running back will chop block him and then go out on a route. Everything else is pretty much the same except I do like to put in this situation. I like to put the tight end on a flat, and the main reason why is just to help with the pass protection. What you're going to see though is that this little hitch is going to now hold those yellows instead of the running back needing to be able to do that. Now, real quick, uh, last thing I want to show you is a setup where you actually are 100% going to block the running back. And I just want to show you how this works against this concept. So spacing switch, we're just going to leverage the power of the hitch route or the little, um, the little like angled hitch route. And if you watch this angled hitch route, you're going to see, look what it does. See how it also holds those zones. So if you can't put the, if you can't get those zones to hold, then you can get them to hold by simply just leaving that uh, standard hitch there. What I like about this play also is you don't have to have, you don't have to run off the deep routes. Um, so what you can do is this can actually get you a plus one. So you can now run a really nice spacing concept over here on this right side and then still have the power to hit the crosser right underneath the outside third over on the left. So this is a really fun little play to use if you have Power Rod Master, if you're playing a mutt. Um, this is just a really, really good way to run this concept. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video breakdown. And you can do this from almost any play in the game. So be sure to do it. It's really good for mesh posts as well uh, out of the uh, Seattle Gun Bunch. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up via text message. And if you want to get my New England Patriots Offensive Guide where I've broken down in depth the entire playbook, you can get that down in the description of this video.